Hello, everyone. My name is Adi Shankar. I'm a technical marketing engineer for Cisco XDR. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the blind eagle attack and how Cisco XDR can detect and, and correlate some of the detections together. Now, this attack is published on the Adversary Emulation Library. Uh, this attack was actually presented at Black Hat 2023 by the MITRE Ingenuity team. So let's get a quick high level of how the attack works. It starts off with a spear phishing email, and that email contains a PDF file. So that PDF file looks something like this, and it actually has a link in it, and it's essentially saying, oh, you owe some money to the government, click this link to pay that bill. Now, once the user clicks that link, it's actually going to download a VBS script. Uh, once that Visual Basic script executes, a DLL file is downloaded. So an encoded DLL file is now on the machine. Once that DLL file is executed, the malicious async client payload is then injected into a reg services.exe process on the Windows machine. Now that reg services process is an innocuous Windows program used by the .NET framework for installing services. But using this attack, they actually hollow out that reg services.exe process and then inject the malicious implant into that process's memory. Uh, from there, with the implant on the machine communicating back to the C2 server, the attacker is able to key log on the browser and scrape for credential harvesting. Uh, so this is just a high level on the attack. Uh, now let's take a look at what that looks like in Cisco XDR. So inside of Cisco XDR, you can see I have a list of incidents here. The one we're going to take a look at is threat progression through suspicious endpoint findings and abrupt IDS notice spike. Now when I click on the incident, I can see a drawer with some additional information opens up and I'll go ahead and click on view incident detail. Now here, I can actually see a graph of the assets, observables, and indicators involved in this incident. So right away, I notice uh, a domain machine, the Parmesan machine here, and it's been accessed by the administrator user. So that's pretty interesting, right? I normally would not expect the administrator user to access this machine. I would expect a domain user. So we'll dig into that in a bit. Uh, the next thing I see is a couple of processes here. So I can actually see the reg services.exe process. Again, this is an innocuous process on a Windows machine. It's a normal process. Uh, now, I also see a third thing here, which are some IP addresses. So I can actually see that these are non-RFC 1918 IP addresses that have communicated with the same Parmesan machine. So I can see there's two IPs here. And now if we wanted to dig a little bit deeper, can look into the detections. So when I look into the detections, I can see here at 2.31, uh, there was a Cisco Secure Endpoint Behavioral Detection. And if I click on it, I could see the details. So here I could see a mutex related to async rat was formed on the PID for red services.exe. So now I'm a little suspicious of this red services.exe process. Uh, and if I scroll down, I could actually see the path of that process. This is the standard Windows file path for regservices.exe. Now, if I continue on looking into the detections, I can see there's quite a few intrusion detection system notices, and I can see they're all for the same uh, destination IP, and they're all for the Parmesan machine. So if I were to click on a few of these, I can see these are triggering uh, snort rules on my firewall, and I can see this is almost uh, some type of intrusion attack that is being run on the Parmesan machine from that IP address. Now, if I continue on in the detections list in the next page, I can see there was an IDS notice spike. And if I see the one below, this actually is a different IP, right? It's not the dot 10, it's the dot 15 IP. And if I click on this and look at the details, here I can see uh, a snort rule was triggered on my firewall related to the same async rat on the Parmesan machine. So now we actually have an EDR alert indicating the red services was injected with the async rat. And we also have a network detection from the firewall indicating an IPS alert related to the async rat. So now we have some uh, evidence from the endpoint and the network indicating uh, an async rat infection. So if I wanted to dig deeper into this Parmesan machine, I could go here and view the asset information. 
Now, when I view the asset information, this is going to give me all the details about this machine. And I immediately learn something new, which is the associated users on this machine is actually Alex W at syscript.info. So interesting, Alex W is the user that is associated with this machine. And if I scroll down to see the Duo data, right? Duo is providing data on this asset as well. I can see the app users are also Alex W at syscript.info. So this is pretty interesting. Uh, but again, this Duo data is kind of a summary data. I'm not seeing the full raw logs here. So what I could do is I could pivot to Splunk, for example. And if I go into my Splunk using the Cisco Security Cloud app, this is a new technical add-on that is published in the Splunk-based app store. This is a very modular app to ingest Cisco security data into Splunk. So you can see here, uh, this app allows you to ingest data from XDR, from Duo, and from Cisco Firewall. Those are the data that we have ingested into our Splunk currently. So if I go dig into the Duo data, uh, I could then see all of the individual login records of my environment. Now, in this uh, demo environment, all of the domain users use our Duo to multi-factor off when they log into Azure Active Directory. So if I wanted to dig deeper on these logs, I could click the search icon. This is going to take me to Splunk search where I could see some of those raw logs. And if I filter here uh, for the device I'm looking for, which is the Parmesan machine, I could actually see that Alex W was granted access to Microsoft Azure Active Directory using an SMS passcode. And I also see the time there of 2.17 a.m. So this is about 10 or 15 minutes before we saw that EDR alert for webservices.exe. Very interesting. Now, I am a little bit suspicious of the Alex W at syscript.info user. So if I wanted to take a very swift uh, response action, I could easily use Cisco XDR to reset this user's password in Microsoft Enter ID. So with just a simple click there, I can execute an automation workflow to reset that user's password without even leaving the Splunk interface. So pretty cool. Uh, now that we have this information, we could actually launch an investigation in XDR on the Alex W user. So if I go to Cisco XDR and I were to investigate the Alex W user, this would query my integrations for information on Alex W. And here I can see there is actually an email, right? And the subject of the email was, please see attached. And I can see the file name that was attached is notificacion de pago.pdf. That's the same PDF that I showed earlier. Now, if we dig into the details of this detection, we can see the email was received at 2.16 a.m., about one minute before we saw Alex W. logging in to Microsoft Active Directory with our Duo MFA. So here are the details of the email. I can see that it was sent from a clean domain of gmail.com. I can see there was a URL inside of the email, and I can also see that that PDF was attached as well. So now we're able to put the chain together. It seems like Alex W received an email. About a minute later, he authenticated to Duo uh, and accessed that email. And then about 10 or 15 minutes later, we had the EDR alert for redservices.exe with the injected async rat implant. And we also have a similar detection on the network with an IPS event. So now we've really been able to put the story of this attack together and we need to do something about it. So that's where response comes in. So in this environment, uh, we have automation. So we have automated response and we also have built-in response. So users, the analysts could come in here and take any of the pre-built actions. Now, as I mentioned, we are using automation in this environment. So anytime an incident is triggered, uh, we have an automation workflow to use Cohesity to take a protection group snapshot of the VM. So we can see that this incident was created at 4.05 a.m. And if we scroll down low, we could see right at 4.05 a.m., an automation workflow was triggered. Cohesity identify restore point for affected virtual machines. Uh, we can see a restore point was identified for the Parmesan uh, syscript.info machine. Now, if we go over a page, we could see the second Cohesity workflow where a protection group snapshot is actually taken of the affected VMs. 
So if we wanted to view the details of this run, we can click view runs here, and this will actually take us to that run of the automation workflow. This is where we can see the details of the actual API calls that were sent to Cohesity. Now this workflow runs successfully, and we can see that all the output is green, so we know that it worked. Now, if we wanted to validate that this actually executed a snapshot for those machines, I can pivot into Cohesity, and I can see that at 12.05 a.m., which is when the incident was generated UTC time, uh, all three of the machines inside of that protection group, a, a snapshot was initiated, and we could see that that job took about 17 minutes to complete on the Parmesan machine. So now we're using the Cohesity Automated Ransomware Recovery Workflows uh, as our data backup and recovery solution and automated response in this incident.